Hi right, guys, welcome to another season of How to Draw How to Play. Today we've got Erlong Shen, or I'm just going to refer to him as Erlong for most of the video. Um, you can play in multiple ways. You can build in full tank with Sentinel's Gift. You can go Death's Toll and go ADC. You can go ability based. I'm just going to be going hybrid this one. Um, reason is, is because of the team comp we've got and the team comp they've got, I need to go hybrid. And um, they've got two physical, so it's basically a free berserker. So Erlong is an attack speed based god. Um, he does quite a bit of damage with his abilities, but he more shines when it comes to attack speed. So in the jungle, you'll probably level the one or the two. In this game, it will be leveling the two, uh, and then the three, and then the one, because we're going to be frontlining a lot. We don't, we're probably not going to be doing most of the damage, especially with the Yannis in the game. But yeah, this um, this god is going to be very heavily centered around counter builders. So if we're rolling them, I'll probably go a lot more auto attack based, and you know, Frostbound, Haste Katana, that sort of stuff. But it just depends how they go. Obviously, they've got a, they've got a lot of ability to stop me closing that distance. Um, Vulcan's got his knock up. dan has got his um, his one that does quite a lot of damage, and uh, Medusa's got her ult, all of which can really stop me advancing. And obviously, with Erlen, you want to close that gap because uh, the dog does quite damage as well as you. Which is one of the main reasons why I don't recommend building ability based, is because the dog does not benefit from it. So you're basically not getting a big use from it kind of trapped here. So the way I look at it is aggressively use the ferret or mink, whatever it's called, and then defensively use the turtle. Obviously the turtle does have some perks in terms of um, attacking sometimes, but generally speaking it's better the other way around. And we're just getting pushed on the tower quite hard at the moment. They don't have a front line so their early game damage is just going to keep us under a tower, which is fine. We don't need to play mega aggressive. But yeah, if you see double physical with any auto attack based god, try and get berserkers. At the moment, it's very strong, they might nerf it, but for the time being, it's probably one of the best pickups for auto attack based warriors as well as most ADCs. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw it on the Danza. Don't want to commit too much there. See if we get a little bit of damage off on them. I'm going to keep chipping away with the two. So the thing with the two is. There's a middle circle inside the big circle. Catch them in the middle circle, they're rooted. Uh, obviously does a lot of damage, so you know, if you're rooting them and doing that damage, you can you can start a fight or force a kill quite comfortably without committing too much. The good thing about this is, is that I can hit the turret and hit wave with the two as well, because it's quite a good AoE. So Try and zone off a bit in case Danza tries to come in. There he is. Do a bit of damage on him. Trigger the one. And he's just going to leg it. So I've got to mention the one is um, like a physical damage buff, which is why when you go in jungle, you normally level the one or the two. Um, the two, obviously, as I described, is the root and the three I've already displayed it to you. But yeah, the one's the one's niche. It can be really good or it can be really bad. I'm just going to call her in here with my taunt. Free kill. We need to back off here. But yeah, we can we can CC one person very hard to the point of a kill, and we can CC the whole team on Joust. Um, but nine times out of ten, you just want to be targeting that one main character, which early game is obviously going to be Medusa, late game is probably going to be the Dan, so there's not going to be a point where we heavily target Vulcan, because he doesn't really have that big escape, um, and Sukien can chase him down in the ult quite easily. So we're just going to really focus on hitting those may uh, those ADCs quite hard. You can rush boots um, for that early game damage spike. However, I don't see the point in it. In my opinion, for the boots on an Erlang early game is just for movement speed. So if you're dealing with someone where you need high movement speed, do it. Um, purely because I'd rather have the defense and the bonus damage, we still get bonus damage from getting Berserkers. So we're not on a massive, massive power spike and we are a little bit slower, but we've got a, a bit more defense and we've still got that aggression potential. And um, considering the team comp anyway, we're always going to be pushed under the tower quite a lot at the start. So there's no point going something that's for major aggression when we can't really be aggressive. Tried to talk her under the tower, which is already dead. We can start a fight on Danza here because he's got no mana. 
Got these purely fairly easily. We don't want to commit too much though. Bit of a waste of my ult. I didn't think they'd burst her as quickly. I thought Giannis had already used his too. Just gonna back here, get Berserkers online. Yeah, now R2 is hitting for a lot. Early game, the, the almost 300 damage I'm going to be doing is, is an awful lot. And it helps like distance closing. So if they're getting over, you can root them, dash in, or just taunt them in. And uh, it's, it's a good combination. Erlong's strong, but he's not OP. You know, Osiris is Osiris is very, very strong, and I'm picking Osiris over an Erlong most of the time, because obviously the built-in anti-heal, especially on Joust, is really nice as well. But... Um, Erlong's still good. He's probably, in terms of conquest, he's probably a bit better in the in the jungle than he is on anything else. That's a good piano assault, to be fair to. Him. She's gonna root her. Ah, oh, shame she dashed it at the right time. I hope I'm not too quiet. I've got a bit of a sore throat from work today, so um, yeah, if I am quiet, do apologise, but should be alright. That's why I sound a bit raspy and a bit more deeper voiced as well, because I have to talk a lot. Well, most people say I talk too much anyway, but it is what it is. Don't really want to back on the wave, gents. So at the moment, we're not really getting that distance close to um, really warrant leveling the the, uh, the one, so we're just going to level the three. Obviously, a bit of extra protections while we've got uh, double ABC is quite nice as well, quite important. You can realistically after the two for joust. I always recommend leveling the two, and then leveling the one or the three depending on the situation. So if you're closing distances, you've got a very high progressive team. Level the one. If you haven't got that, level the three because the three is obviously versatile. You can use it defensively and offensively. So it's um, I find it the better option to level 99% of the time. I'm just gonna try and root and taunt in here. Hopefully my team can come in and get some frags. I've left them all very low. It's a bit frustrating that. Really my team should have been picking up one or two of them there. But it's okay. Could be worse, we could have all died. And yeah, let's manage to sneak away. So for how long, if you're going to build a mobility base, which I don't recommend, build warriors, but generally speaking Ninja Tabby is the best boots to get from him, he's an ADC, so you want that attack buff. Uh, the only different one would be Osiris where getting warrior boots is sometimes better because you can build a mobility base as well, he can hybrid between the two quite easily. Erlan can, just not as well. Should be able to get a bit of a play going on here actually. No, they're gonna leg it, which is fine. Just gonna retreat. And Suki's done quite well there. It's given him the levels to get back in the game as well because he's a little bit under. But with Erlang, you don't have to play majorly aggressive at the start. You can play a little bit slower and get him online first. Obviously he has got that aggression factor, but as you've seen, my team isn't the uh, kill securers that I'm used to. So sometimes it's all about adapting, really. Erlang, if um, Dan's hit his basics there, I might have been in a bit of trouble, to be fair. What I'll do, because Erlang has a couple of ways to build him, 
I'll leave in the description below how to um, how to build the ADC version. I won't leave the ability based version in because I get people want to play can play the way they want, but I don't recommend doing it, and it's not something I'd be confident in sharing because I don't play him ability based very often or at all really. Whereas ADC and um, hybrid, I do flex between. Obviously, if you're building in tanky, you can just it's the normal tank build that most people do, and I'll, I'll, I'll drop a tank build as well. Why not? But it's not it's not really the best way to utilize them. I find going hybrid auto attack is consistency wise, it's the most consistent. Have we got any ults up? Yeah, we got Suki's ult up. And Yanis is ult. He knows I'm here, 100%. In the tournament, so Suki should be able to get some kills here. Don't want to chase that under tower. When we've got minions coming, we'll just hang back, get the minions, then I'll turtle and root him. I know he's Aegis. Free Aegis, really. So when you're doing towers, trigger your one if you got it. Obviously, the physical power works on the uh, works on the tower. Let's have a look. So, oh, they're both building the same. They're all building healing, so we need anti heal. So we can go toxic blade, which is um, obviously the ADC's version of anti heal. But for this game, we're just going to literally go hybrid. So we've already got our damage in Berserkers and our boots. So we're now just going to go Contagion. Contagion isn't the best, but they've got two physicals. So, I mean, it's worth picking up, really. Especially if I'm going to be diving at them a lot. As you can see, I'm still hitting the basics for quite a bit. It's all about adapting to the game that you're in with someone like Erlong. That's just annoying, really. The one thing we've got to be careful is we don't really have much magical protection. So we are going to get shredded by um, Vulcan. But it's okay because his abilities are fairly easy to dodge, especially the ult. The only troublesome one's the uh, back, is it called Backfire, the one where he launches himself backwards? The one. Do we want more relic? Let's go shield of thorns. Thorns is always quite nice. Oh yeah, that's got so unlucky there. It's quite good with his ult, fair play to him. Janus coming in. Yeah you are. Good man. Oh, he didn't quite catch him, that's a shame. But yeah, as you can see, Vulcan's not really an issue, which is why we didn't need to build magical protection. Um, it's something we'll probably look at now, or we'll just get a hybrid item. Um, so, Runic's quite nice. Obviously, you're getting that power, you're getting that debuff on him, but I'm probably going to go Ansel. So, when I get hit by that magical ability, if it's the three, he gets silenced, so he can't three one combo me and basically one shot me. Well, put me down to the point where I'll get one hit by the ADCs afterwards. So Ansel against Vulcan's really good because obviously the 3-1 combo is his bread and butter. Um, so getting that out of the way ASAP is, is really important. Obviously it only buys me a couple of seconds, but that can make all the difference in a late game team fight. Gonna knock him up here. Trigger my thorns to be a bit more aggressive. Oh, 
can just chase them down relatively easily there. As soon as Medusa dashes down, she's pretty much dead. Can't really dive this, we need to pull back. Especially with damage up. Sell these mana pots, just wait for the gold I think, have a sip of water. It's also worth noting, card shield's quite nice, um, but that's more of a so if you're a solo lane you build cad shield obviously if you're on conquest there's a lot more people who'd be using the healing ability sort of stuff um, and whilst it will work on erlang's taunt because erlang's taunt can fluctuate from it obviously you get the plus there which means it can fluctuate um it's just not gonna be enough to uh want to buy it on joust there are much better items to get i'm gonna back off here before i get thirsty down So what I mean about 3 one combo, I was probably dead there if I didn't uh, counter the Lancel. I'm actually just going to back up and rush back in. So last we're going to go damage an item. Um, obviously, probably going to be a higher real item like Frostbounds. Because they are doing damage to me and I think they'll probably build crit, they are. I think they're mates because they're doing identical builds as well. I'm gonna taunt him as many as I can. Rooted Danza, so he's pretty much dead and all. Hey, Vulcan. And that's just unfortunate on my part. It's very unfortunate. But yeah, last item. As you can see, popular items. These, they're a good basis to go off, but obviously they don't always work. Um, whacked into one build together. So stone cut would be really good if I was against two tanks, but they haven't got a tank. Um, so we're going to go Frostbounds just to slow them. Like if I had Frostbounds there, he was probably dead because he wouldn't have had his escape. Um, I could get him out of the Discord. Out of the Discord would be a good item here, but we do need a bit of damage just to... Um, damage or CC potential so obviously we get the physical power but we're using it for the passive to slow people down when we hit them with our basics. Uh, you'll see it built on most ADC, um, ADC warriors, you'll normally see a frostbounds. They are getting a little bit fed though which is annoying. I'm going to aggro the minions and knock them out of the way, just so our phoenix doesn't get rinsed. Two ADCs will destroy our phoenix. Vulcan's pretty bulky. I'm going to try and tank this for him. And taunt him under, should be a free kill. Yeah. Go on, yeah, let's hit your stuff. I'd love to go back in on this, but I don't have the faith in Tsukiyomi. I don't know how he's still alive there. Yeah, this is why I didn't go in, because I probably would have died. He's just about a nabbed one at the end there, but... I don't want to be toxic and flame the guy, but... He's just not committing at the right time. So maybe he should be committing when I'm at the front soaking up the damage, not to go and try and get one kill because trading yourself against two ADCs is not good. Because those that what one of those ADCs on their own could just rip through a tower late game. But it might be worth actually they they're all going full crit, so I might have to get spectral armor. The spectral armor would decrease that by sixty percent. Um, if they both go Wind Demon, I will. If they go the Shuriken that does um, anti I probably won't bother. Or Poison Star. It's only if they go Wind Demon, I'll get it.
taunt Danzer in, just keeping in the fight. There's no point holding my ult. It's a good ult by Suku actually. Get close to him, I can shell him. There's the pick up on Vulcan. Should be able to drop the Phoenix here. But it might be game ending. See what we can do. Gonna use a turret for a bit of shield. Nah, we can't do it. Um, I, I don't know about that one. I know there's a little bit of an explosion, but it shouldn't really cover a whole Phoenix base. But oh well, it must have been like on the cusp. But yeah, we got Frost Mans now. Um, if they were a bit better players, if the Medusa was a bit better, probably would have gone Spectrum instead of Frostbound. But as it stands, they're not really that threatening, and they haven't got enough crit online to scare me to the point where I need to get it. Um, so we're just going to roll like that and upgrade both of our relics now. Obviously, because they're not that threatening and Medusa isn't hitting that many basics, the shell's going to make all the difference with the upgrade. So I'm picking that over waiting the 200 gold to get the upgraded uh, flag, which probably would have been Spartans. I prefer Spartans over War. I haven't tested a lot with War, but I found consistency-wise Spartan on most people works a lot better. There's probably a few niche ones. I'm pretty sure Serb with War banner is better than Spartans, but... Personally, I just, I like Spartans, and it sounds cool, so that's my reasoning, my flawless reasoning. I'm just going to keep these guys busy while they do the BDK. Nice one, Banzi. Double root. The team isn't with me. I don't know why they hung back. We had a fire minion wave with us, but I'm gonna try and tank this. I want anyone taking it. We shouldn't. I don't know why he's leaving. We can literally dive and end. I'll play by the Ellis. Just gonna back here. Um, just get the health going again, and I can cover the map pretty quickly. It's a bit like Jeb in terms of distance he can dash, it's pretty much the same, so. Yeah, Phoenix should fall here, and then game should be not too far behind. Oh, they weren't, they weren't poisoned anyway. Just gonna run at him. I don't, I don't think he can kill me. Yeah, he can't. Lol. I'm not gonna be toxic kill them, so I feel bad. Um, but that's the build. Obviously we would have ended on the Spartan flag. I'll leave in the description below an ADC build and a tank build. I might do an ability build if I'm feeling nice, but I don't recommend playing it. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.